All right, so before we start, let's see. What was your experience with accessibility so far? Anyone? Do we have developers, designers, content writers? OK. So yeah, there are so many people taking care about accessibility, and even more definitions related to accessibility. But today, I'm not going to share any of them. You can Google that. Dear friends, today I want to talk about something much more important than pure terms. You know, here, as I told you, and as you know, there are so many developers and designers. And you have a strong power. Power to make and impact thousands of thousands of lives of people with disabilities. To help them buy things, work, travel, and overall lead more prosperous life. Truth be told, not so many developers and people think like that. And it's not because you are bad persons. No, not at all. It's because of the lack of education, causing lack of responsibilities. And uh, now, here is my personal definition of accessibility. So accessible website is a website that allows all people to use all of its features without any support except assistive technology devices that they use in everyday life and software solutions, such as magnifiers and speech programs. Of course, there are so many disabilities out there. And accessibility can be done across different types of disabilities. But today, we're going to focus exclusively on this accessibility for screen reader users. In most cases, they are blind or visually impaired, although they are not um, the only users. So screen readers are used by uh, people with different types of disabilities, such as like the people with dyslexia. Now, let's see. What is the screen reader and how does it work? So the screen reader is actually a speech software. It converts text into speech. Um, now, many people don't know this, but screen readers are very powerful, very sophisticated programs. And uh, they have a long history of development. They have been developing for more than 30 years. So they follow um, development of contemporary uh, PC machines. Screen user users can use normal machines with Windows, iOS, Android. However, on top of all programs that we usually use and that we all know about, they have installed those speech programs, those speech software. And um, although it's so powerful and sophisticated, it's not, well, it, it, it can't do anything. And um, it has some limits. And this is why we need you, developers, who can help us make the World Wide Web more accessible. Here are at least three reasons for which accessibility standards should be met. So the first one is obviously SEO. Google loves accessible web. And if the website is accessible, the ranking will be higher. Number two, returning customers. When people with disabilities understand that their website is, that the website they want to buy from is great and want to use, they will always come back. And number three, 
brand reputation. You can stand out from competitors if you are sure that you are accessible. There are various ways to check accessibility. Some of them are mm, useful. Some of them are much more useful. And uh, one thing that you should remember is that you should never assume that something is accessible just because you think that it's accessible, especially if you have never had experience with that. Also, just because something works with the keyboard does not mean that it will be accessible to screen reader users. Andrea will cover this shortly, but what I can say is that um, you should always reach out to users and uh, ask them if they are willing to test the website for you, do a quick report and show you if the website is accessible or not, tell you what are some errors they detected and uh, what you should fix. Okay, but um, how the accessibility or inaccessibility affects daily life of the blind? Well, you know, I wanted to open a bank account and um, I completed all of the information that they required. First name, last name, whatever, date of birth. And then they said, okay, you can click here, we'll send you the SMS code, type here to verify, good. And then the last step that said, please agree with our terms and conditions, click submit and your account will be created. The problem was the checkbox that I was expected to check that says, yes, I accept, was not accessible. And I couldn't check it. And I could not proceed with my account creation. And guess what I did? Well, I closed the website and I changed the bank. So they lost my money. <laughs> what a silly. Now, the most popular website for job seekers in Serbia was not accessible. A few years ago, four or five years ago, I was looking for a job. And although all fields that were uh, required were labeled correctly, I could not upload my CV there. And so I called them and said, hello, this is Lazar. So I'm trying to apply for XYZ position, but the problem is your platform is not accessible, so I cannot put my CV. And I said, oh, we're so sorry to hear about it. Let us reproduce it and we'll call you back. Shortly, they called me back and said, you're sorry for waiting. Yes, you are right. Unfortunately, we could reproduce your issue and our platform is not accessible. And I said, okay, so what should I do now? And the guy said, look, until we fix it, which requires strong budget and time, I suggest you send me your application via email and I will upload this for you. Come on. Just a few months ago, my friend, who is <laughs> by chance, well, nothing is by chance, but who is totally blind, called me up and said, hey, Lazar, you know what? I, I want to try to find a job and uh, do you know if that platform is accessible? Well, pff, I'm not sure. I mean, I found the job in the meantime and a lot of things happened, but as far as I know, they were not. They are expected to fix it. Let me check. So I checked and guess what? It didn't work again. So I called them up and said basically the same thing. And the guy said, look, yes, we totally understand you. 
But the problem was that we had COVID, and this is why we, sh why we, had, to, to why we had to restructure our budget. So unfortunately, we were not able to fix it yet. And then I said, look, if you do not fix it shortly, as soon as possible, I will publish this on LinkedIn. And I'll say that the most popular platform for job seekers is not available to people who lack jobs, who are actually, so to speak, um, disadvantaged, disadvantaged group when it comes to finding a job. And in two days, that was Friday, I checked the platform on Monday and that worked correctly. So changes are possible, but we need pressure. We need to put pressure. Now, um, I would just kindly ask my assistants to show the video that I prepared for you. You will be able to see what the inaccessible website looks like and uh, what are some issues that blind people or screen users can have if the website does not work as expected. All right, so now I will show you two inaccessible websites. When I say inaccessible, I mean unavailable for blind people and screen reader users. You will be able to experience what it looks like when you're blind and you want to get something, get the information or book something, buy something from the website which is not accessible. Let's start with eDreams. For people who don't know, eDreams is the agency that allows you to book flights. So now I have this website up and running. Let me maximize the window so you can see it properly. System menu. Your travel agent. I will now press E key. Where from? Edit. Where from? I'll press enter. Where from? Edit blank. And let's e say I want to fly from Belgrade. D E L G R A D E. Okay. I will now press tab key. Belgrade. Where to? Edit blank. Where to? Let's go to Athens. A T H E N S. Okay. I'll now press escape key to leave this edit field. List with six items at Athens. Greece. Volney and Chilos, Flows, 164km from Athens, Kofisha. On Athens. One of Volney, Greece, at Athens. Okay, I can choose the airport. Greece, Volney, 100 on Athens, United States. Ado Athens, in the on that 100 Volney and Greece. Volney and Chakri, at Athens. Out of list blank, where to edit at departure, edit read only. Where to edit Athens. Okay, so I think I'm able to choose, uh, uh, so I think I was able to choose the airport. Departure, edit read only. But now I have to choose my departure date. I'll press enter here, but I already know that this won't be accessible because this is the red only field. And when you encounter this on a, on a calendar, it's very difficult to do anything. Your travel agency, put cheap flight dreams in. Okay, so now I opened this field and now I'm going with my down arrow key. So below the, the picker, then to the left, I press my left arrow key, then I'll press my right arrow key up and it doesn't say a word. So it is not possible to pick the departure date. Let's go. Let's see if I can choose the date, the, the, the return date. Continue button. Return at red only. Your travel date. Return again. So it, I can't choose my return flight. Okay. So the date picker is not accessible and people with disabilities, particularly blind people, are simply not able to book the flight throughout this agency. What a pity. Now, let's go to the other website. It is Tesco Supermarket. It is the, as far as I know, one of the biggest supermarket chains in the UK. Our Tesco Supermarket's online growth. 
Like okay. So now I'm on the website. I'll press System menu. What's Alt space and X Uber. to maximize the window, and then I will go down the page. Link skip the main content. Right Community food connection scheme. You're working with Fair Share to save and donate surplus food from our stores. Find out more. Community food connection scheme. You're working with Fair That's Share to save and donate surplus food from our stores. Find out more. Community food connection scheme. Find out more. Viewing three of three items. Community link skip the footer. What's for lunch? You see, this is the slider. That is constantly appearing. Community food connection scheme. You're working with Fair Share to save and donate surplus food from our stores. Find out more. Community food connection scheme. You're working with Fair Share to speech mode off. Um. Let me switch off the screen viewer. So now the the slider is here and it constantly speaks, which simply does not allow me to control my behavior on the website. Let me turn my screen viewer again. Speech mode talk. Out of list dialogue, we use cookies to improve your offline. Some functionality may be on the menu, car menu, item, button, sign in. Community food connection scheme, you're working with fair share to save and donate surplus See, food from our stores. Find out more. Community food connection scheme, you're working with fair share to save and donate surplus food from our stores. Find out more. Community food connection scheme, find out more. Viewing three of three items. Community food connection scheme, you're working with fair share to save and donate surplus food from our stores. Land, land, looking for a change. Mix up meal times with our range of covered staples and dinner kits. Shop now, looking for a change. Mix up meal times with our range of covered staples and dinner kits. Shop now, shop now, looking for a change. Viewing one of three items. Looking for a change. Mix up meal times. Speech mode off. Okay, so I think you got the idea of what it looks when the website is not accessible. All right. Now the question for you all is, will you now start considering uh, accessibility solutions and uh, taking care about accessibility when you create websites? I hope yes. Head over to my friend, Andrea. Afterwards, we'll be available to all of your, your, of your questions. Hello, guys. My name is Andrea, and uh, I'm a web developer. Lazar has just uh, provided you uh, the answer to the question, how? And I am here to provide you with the, quest uh, to, with the answer to the question, why? Why we overlook website accessibility? First of all, I would like to ask the audience, uh, how many of you are uh, web developers, web designers, website builders? Could you please raise your hand? us and uh, now how many of you were doing accessibility testing using a screen reader please raise your hand I'll ask people we are here to change that so let us answer the question why we overlook website accessibility there are many reasons and uh, they depend on a specific situation but uh, I would group them in four categories uh, you have budget and time frame, then uh, generalized approach to website design, then the fact that uh, uh, website accessibility is a brand new area to explore, and uh, finally, uh, reliance on accessibility test tools. We are going to see in a bit why, that, uh, why is that wrong. Let's talk first about budget and time frame. In many cases, accessibility is never mentioned in the project because you think about oh, how many pages will this website have, how many products, uh, let's define the content that goes in, uh, let's define uh, the time frame in which it will be delivered, uh, let's make sure it uh, complies with GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. And what we forget, we forget to mention accessibility. Sometimes clients think, hey, uh, accessibility is included, right? And uh, that's where uh, the problems char start uh, when accessibility also was enforced and uh, then uh, customers can uh, get fined for uh, having an inaccessible website and then they can sue the developer. Anyways, uh, that's only one of the issues. Uh, the, another, uh, the another issue that uh, creates an inaccessible website is that uh, time crunch can uh, very often result in uh, uh, cutting corners. Basically, uh, I'm not going to test uh, the specific feature of the website correctly because I'm on uh, a deadline and I need to finish project. That's obviously going to lead to accessibility issues. It can also be uh, compromised by specific wishes of a customer. And uh, in uh, those cases, uh, it's most likely, hey, I want uh, a slider which has uh, this animation. Uh, it looks cool on this website. I want it on my, web on my website. Then we have to develop it from scratch. And uh, in that uh, very moment, we forget to include accessibility. 
also, unfortunately, even the basic using, user testing often gets skipped. Now, uh, let's talk about generalized approach to website design. When I mean generalized approach to website design, I mean that when we start building a website, we start building it for a majority of users. And uh, then we start developing uh, the bits for a minority of users, which can uh, obviously uh, lead to uh, issues. And uh, the uh, specific user groups uh, are uh, not included, resulting in accessibility issues. Uh, I also had experience with many of my customers uh, that did not really understand website accessibility. And they were confusing it with, uh, uh, for instance, a responsive design. For, uh, for instance, uh, they said, like, hey, uh, my website is accessible. I can access it on my mobile phone, on my tablet. Uh, no, website accessibility is not uh, just about the device you are accessing it, not just the browser. You have to uh, include assistive technologies. You have to include specific behaviors of people. If you don't include that, you didn't make anything. You didn't make website accessible. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, many of us, uh, when we uh, want to make something cool, uh, don't really think about website accessibility. And uh, I can uh, use Lazarus' example that he could not open a bank account, account for a simple checkbox. I checked that website. And what I found out, I found out that the checkbox he was unable to click was uh, actually composed from uh, two divs, lots of styling, uh, some JavaScript. And uh, what happens when uh, a designer, uh, a web designer, uh, makes a checkbox like that? Well, input type checkbox element is automatically uh, recognized by screen readers and is. Uh, easily uh, to check it without, uh, and uh, you don't have to put too much effort to make it accessible. If you develop something from scratch, you have to put lots of effort to make it accessible, and uh, these guys were uh, obviously oblivious to that fact. In uh, general, I'm just saying, guys, if you don't have to, please do not reinvent the wheel. Now. Uh, let's talk about uh, the website accessibility in general. It's a huge, huge area to explore, and we are barely scratching its surface. Uh, many people feel intimidated by that. Thus, they revert to old, ha old habits, and uh, sometimes they downright reject uh, taking on a website accessibility project. They just say, hey, uh, I'm going to develop you a website. However, if you want to make it accessible, hire a specialized developer or agency or something like that, which is a very bad approach. Uh, if we need to uh, avoid this, uh, how, how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by uh, just saying to ourselves, uh, like the great uh, Greek philosopher Socrates, I know that I uh, know nothing. Why is this important? Accessibility is a huge field, and uh, we would spend years and years trying to figure out every single accessibility rule. But if we know that those rules exist, that those users exist, uh, which technologies they use, how those technologies work, we are already on the right path. And uh, basically, uh, if uh, you are not prepared to develop yourself further, uh, to learn new things, then uh, it's time for you to uh, find another occupation because uh, web design does require uh, continuous learning. Now, I'm going to talk about the most tricky of those reasons, and that is reliance on accessibility tools. Okay. Uh, I am using this tool, I'm using this tool, I'm using this plugin to make sure that my website is accessible. And uh, it gives me information, I'm happy with that. Uh, I think my website uh, is accessible. Uh, what's the problem here? The problem with this mindset is uh, it's probably uh, derived from uh, website optimization. We like to tick checkboxes. We like to think, okay, if I do this, 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 and that, my website will be accessible. If I uh, ensure that uh, my website is ADA compliant, it's going to develop the best experience to uh, the users. 
this is wrong. There is a big gap between theory and practice. And uh, right now, at this very moment, user testers have no real alternative. Let me show you ex an example. How can we uh, test out the website? Let's say we use an accessibility tool. I'm using Wave for uh, this example. And I asked Plaza to give me one website, which is uh, fully accessible for him, and the other website, which is uh, not very accessible, and he, he had issues using it. What are we seeing that here? We are seeing here that uh, our accessibility test tool, and uh, this is not the issue with the tool itself, but the way it was used, shows much more errors and notices and alerts to the website that is perfectly accessible to us. And why is that? Let's see. So this is the first website. It's called uh, Blind Help Project. And as you can see, uh, it has errors, con contrast errors, etc., etc. Lots of things that can be improved. Yes, it does. However, for a screen reader user, this website is perfectly accessible. The, uh, the issues this website has are more for uh, the users that do not use a screen reader. For instance, contrast issues, uh, uh, text formatting, uh, font families, uh, which use serif fonts. That is not a very pleasant experience. However, uh, that does not mean that uh, this website is inaccessible to others. And let's now try uh, the Air Serbia website, which uh, Lazar had issues using it. It has uh, only a couple of errors, but there is one big issue. Can anybody from the audience tell me what's the issue with this test? You can't see the website? Yeah, correct. So uh, I'm going to explain you what happened. Uh, when uh, you visit this website, a DDoS check will fire. When DDoS check fires, uh, it basically checks uh, whether the website is uh, being uh, abused or not, and it's uh, like a failsafe. The problem is when Wave uh, access to the website, uh, the DDoS check fired, and completely hidden all the content. So you cannot see uh, anything. And uh, the, basically, what is Wave testing? It is testing this black screen for DDoS check. But if we use Wave with a browser extension, which looks similarly, and wait for the DDoS check to pass, we are going to be able to see uh, the real uh, deal. Lots of errors, lots of contrast errors lots of room for improvement. So you can see the issue is not with the accessibility tool. It's only an issue with the way it was used. Try understanding the way how uh, website accessibility uh, tools work and uh, base your uh, results on that. And obviously, never ignore a screen reader user. If there is one key takeaway that I want you to bring home uh, from this talk, it would be this. W regardless of your profession, always remember, it is our duty to make the internet a more accessible place. Thank you. minutes for questions. If anybody has questions, we have mics lined up on both sides. And you can approach the mics, ask any questions. Thank you very much. That was an awesome talk and very eye-opening. Um, I don't know if we have also questions from the live audience. Um, I do have a question, though. Yeah. Because when we talk about accessibility and we are trying to introduce that and make that part of the project, unless somebody is fully aware of what it means and why it's so important, it's difficult to convince them that it, well, 
one of the excuses they say is like, yeah, but like most people can't access it. Like they, it's, it, they, they still, a lot of people still dismiss it. So I don't know if you have encountered tri tips and tricks on how to make people yeah. more aware of how important it is and um, who's left out. You know, um, it's very difficult to convey this message to people who never heard about this. But that's why we had a strong and strict uh, regulations. You can just say that people can easily get sued and uh, they will need to pay a huge amount of money. That always works. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, I, just, I would just uh, like to add uh, that, first of all, that's an excellent question. And uh, there are a couple of ways, a couple of strategies to persuade people. Uh, first of all, uh, you're uh, trying to uh, convert a customer to, uh, uh, like, uh, how to say, a uh, long-term customer. Uh, if, you are, if you want to keep that customer, you need to make sure that customer gets the best out of the website. And uh, the best way you can uh, engage with that customer is do the homework, do the research, uh, feel how their business works, uh, see what are their business needs. And uh, then you can present to them the numbers, the legislation trends, which are coming, you know, for the EU that comes in uh, 2025, right? And uh, obviously, uh, it depends from the region uh, to region, however, it is coming. And it is inevitable that websites will have to be accessible, otherwise uh, there will be consequences. And uh, not only that you're going to get a long-term client using this approach, but also, uh, you are uh, going to avoid bad reputation. Even if you protect yourself perfectly from any legal implications, you're still going to have bad reputation. Hey, this guy uh, developed me a website, but uh, the, the website was not accessible, and uh, I didn't read the contract correctly. I'm not, going to, uh, I'm not going to hire this guy anymore. So you're losing a client. You're losing a customer. And uh, if you're doing research uh, carefully enough, you will see that depending on profession, uh, there are lots of uh, opportunities to gain ex extra profit for the business if your website is accessible. That's it for me uh, about this question. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we still have time. There are some questions. Go ahead. Uh, coming from the hosting industry. You know me from yeah. earlier. <laughs> um, and I want more money, of course. That is like the point of, of business. Uh, have you ever tested the cPanel Plus and the hosting dashboards and panels? How many of these are actually accessible? Yes. So I tested Hostinger panel. Um, this is the only thing that I, was, that I had the opportunity to try out. That worked. But it was decently, uh, decently working. So this is what I can say. Um, and um, just my personal opinion, but don't, I could be wrong, uh, although it is not related to, to hosting, Gutenberg uh, just doesn't work as expected. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Maybe I think we have a question over there. Oh. Hi. OK, no worries. Um, thanks for your talk, for a great interesting talk uh, at the first. I have a question because in 2025, as you already said, the European Accessibility Act come into force for a lot of companies. So um, not all the companies, but many large companies. How do you think, how will this influence the, ac the accessibility of websites in the real world? Because if I think about GDPR and the compliance there, we have laws into force. But even nowadays, a lot of websites are not compliant with the laws. And I think what happens about accessibility, because it's a um, topic which is important for less mm -hmm. people than GPR compliance. Yeah. Um, I, the accessibility will come, although that will not be, you know, it's the never ending process. That's the thing. You never can say, yes, yeah, so we made the web fully accessible. Some companies will always try to avoid it. Some of them will do their best to, uh, to, to fix those issues. So yeah, uh, you know, I don't live in a 
fallacy that one day every single website will be accessible to the fullest. No, unfortunately, we will never reach that goal. We have to be upfront with that. Um, but it is on us, to, as Andrea said, we need to try this out. We need to push this forward. So yeah, I, I can assume that big companies uh, will be, you know, doing things towards accessibility. But let's see. I'm just going to add uh, to the uh, question a bit of a technical side. Uh, I believe that uh, website accessibility will uh, rise uh, uh, gradually. However, uh, the accessibility law that comes in 2025, well, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's going to create a sort of panic. Uh, hey, my website is not accessible, I need to get it accessible. So uh, majority of uh, companies would probably react in the very uh, last time uh, before uh, the law comes to fruition. However, uh, the thing is, even when the law comes, uh, I think that uh, it would mainly uh, revolve around ADA compliance and then there will be like uh, special cases, etc., etc. We are not going to see a fully ac accessible, uh, obviously we are not going to see a fully accessible uh, company websites because of that. We have time for one more question. So I think of from over here. Yeah. Do you want to go? go ahead. Or, oh, two more. Please let us have two more. Come on. Go ahead. <laughs> he, he conceded okay. the question. <laughs> Mine's not so much screen reader related, but still accessible. There's a lot of contrast myths that exist. And I'd just like to hear your opinion on when a button fails a test for contrast, but user testing shows that the black on blue is not as easily to see as the white on blue, yet black passes, white fails. Um, I'd just be interested to hear your opinion on myths versus the actual kind of user experience. Actually, uh, I had a similar question, so I can maybe piggyback on that. Um, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Um, the question was, uh, when you say that a site is accessible, how does somebody determine that threshold? Just like what my, uh, the other questioner said, um, some of these decisions are based on how we perceive the contrast versus how the testing tool tells us. And what you demonstrated today is that the testing tools also are not very good. So I will, I will take your question after my friend because it's a contrast issue, but I will take yours. Go ahead. Yeah, the, my question was Andrea, exactly maybe, yeah, yeah. how do you figure that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrea, maybe you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, very nice question, by the way. Uh, I, I would say that uh, the, I, I'm, when, when I'm uh, comparing uh, tests from accessibility tools, and uh, tests from uh, real-life users. The main thing that uh, makes me uh, like uh, find what, what is working the best is just uh, interviewing the users, seeing how they uh, use the website. And uh, even if uh, there is a contest issue on the website, if users are, uh, if uh, multiple groups of users are uh, not having uh, the issue with that, that is fine. That's exactly, actually, what uh, I uh, mentioned uh, on uh, the last topic. And uh, it's, uh, the, the thing is, uh, when uh, users are able to use the website uh, and uh, they do not have uh, trouble with it, they can go through all the functions of the website, they can visit all the pages, uh, they have access to all the content, the uh, user experience is seamless. That is my goal to me. I'm not... Uh, uh, interested what uh, testing tool will say to me. Testing tool is uh, just uh, like uh, guidance. It can help me, but uh, I'm uh, also aware of that, that uh, it works a specific way, which is not always uh, going to work the best for my users. So uh, the main thing to take away from this is to always uh, go to user and ask them, hey, do you like this? Do you like that? Even if it's not uh, within the rules uh, of a specific tool or a specific uh, testing device, it can still be accessible and it can still provide uh, 
amazing experience for the user. How do we know that the website is accessible? So you raised the crucial question here, and that's why uh, there, were, there are so many agencies around. So um, first thing, things first, we have to separate user testing from accessibility auditing. User testing is a simple test. So a user in, um, in terms like a screener user, in, a user in question goes over the website, check the issues and tells their opinion. How do we know it's accessible? So there are accessibility standards that are internationally accepted. We have WCAG, WCEG, and then we have uh, American Disabilities Act, then we have uh, that, that uh, European, um, European Accessibility Act, but mostly people are following WCAG. And that is very comprehensive accessibility standard that covers all accessibility issues that you might think of. Screen reader issues, color contrasts, uh, keyboard users issues. Uh, then we have like uh, voice control issues. So a, a lot of things are covered by those standards and they are revised as technology goes on. They are revised like every, um, every two years or every three years. Uh, now we have uh, WCAG 2.1, which is the uh, standard that most uh, agencies are um, following. Um, and yeah, the, all accessibility issues are grouped into three categories. We have P1 issue. If the website has a P1 issue, it means that there is no way that the user with disability, for example, in, in, in Today we are talking about screen reader user, let's, let's, let's stick with that. So if the website has a P1 issue, it means that a screen reader user has a no way to access the certain feature and, um, come de and, and, and uh, do, do the things they want. For example, choosing the right date was a, is a P1 issue. It's a critical issue. Then we have P2 issues. Those are serious issues, which means that there are ways, if the screener is advanced user, there are ways that users can navigate the web and do the thing. And then we had P3 issues. Those are issues that exist, but they do not affect the entire experience. Now, the, the thing is that um, people or companies can get suited only for P1 and P2 issues. So this is how we know, if that answers the question. Thank you so much. Please, a round of applause for Lakara and Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.